I ended my last video on Ren, where I called her Liel's most divisive member by saying that I hoped season two would make it outdated. Did it? Well... I definitely wouldn't call Ren the most divisive character in Superstar anymore. For one thing, Wine obliterates any chance she or anyone else had at that title. <laughs> but even among the members actually currently in Liela, I would say this season solidified Natsume, Cuckoo, and even Kanon as more divisive than Ren. Natsume basically boils down to whether her arc worked and whether her motivations were actually sympathetic and whether or not she's funny or annoying. Cuckoo is a matter of is she to me Nasumire, and did episode 9 make things right, and Kanon is a matter of whether or not she takes up too much screen time and fills too many roles the other characters could have. I'd say they're all more divisive at this point, but the reasons aren't really as in-depth as what I talked about with Ren in the last video, which to give an extremely short recap was that she was built on a relatively tired archetype with a divisive arc. The big difference this season, though, is that Ren barely does anything. I remember joking with friends early in the season about the fact she would at best get like three lines an episode. She was completely and utterly irrelevant early on. I think a big problem she had was that she didn't have a solid connection with any of the other characters and they weren't really giving her one yet. Kanon and Chisato have a strong lifelong friendship. Season two solidified the fact that Kuku and Sumire have become close friends. And even among the new characters, not only do Shiki and Mei have a pre-established relationship, but all four are in the same class, so we often see them spending time together. Ren isn't even in the same class as the other girls. Her already existing issue of feeling distant from the group was arguably even more noticeable during season two. However, Ren did get a focus episode this season. Ren becoming a gamer sounds like the sort of plot I'd make up for like a shitpost fanfiction. And as soon as it was revealed it'd actually be the premise, I was here for it. It was also even set up earlier with a seemingly throwaway gag where she gets really into Mario Party and starts playing some mobile games. A lot of people I've talked to and heard from consider URN to be their favorite episode of the season, and honestly, I completely get it. It's the type of episode that I feel like Love Live is really good at. A small slice of life character focused episode with a fun premise that spotlights a character and explores their connection to the group and their own internal struggles. It reminds me a lot of episodes like A New Me or Happy Halloween from School Idol Project Season 2. And those are two of my favorite Love Live episodes ever, so yeah, needless to say, I love this one too. I think my favorite thing about the episode is how much it explores Ren's insecurities. She views her gaming obsession and the effect it's having on her sleep schedule and work as a complete and total personal failing. She's terrified about the others finding out and feels like she can't ask anyone for help or they'll shun her and want nothing to do with her. A scene where she imagines the other second years angry at her for not making a song because she's become so much of a hardcore gamer that it's taken over her entire life is godly shit. Especially the bit where Chisanto angrily says that this is not circular. It's a fun look at the world through Ren's anxious eyes and it reminds me a lot of her most endearing moments in season one. A friend of mine, Rin, summed Ren up perfectly when we were talking about her. Despite her role, she's not really an Ellie. She's more an Umi trying to be Ellie. Umi is a voice of reason and typically one of the most mature members of Muse. When Ellie joins, she even expresses a relief she's not the only one playing that role anymore. But she's also an absolute mess right under the surface. She breaks the second she's out of her comfort zone, or when she doesn't know what to do. And more than anything, is terrified of her own emotions and wants. One of Umi's biggest moments where she shows how she's grown over the series is one where she simply lets herself admit she wants something. Where she lets herself fully feel and be vulnerable. Ren is a very similar case. She's arguably the most mature member of Liela, at the very least tied with Kanon. But the second she's out of her comfort zone or doesn't know what to do, she's a wreck. A lot like both Umi and Kanon, I mentioned in my last video on Ren, she and Kanon are kind of foils to one another. This is part of why they're both built on the same character archetype. Unlike Umi with Honoka and Katori, or 
con on with Shisato. Ren doesn't have anyone in Liela she feels fully comfortable expressing herself around yet. She doesn't have a rock, and this episode establishes she still needs to grow to let the others become that for her. Initially, only Mei finds out, and Ren desperately pleads with her to not tell anyone else. As we saw earlier, even if Ren is friends with the other second years, she's still fairly removed from them and worries about their reaction, feeling the need to keep up some degree of maturity and competence around them. Also, this leads to the others thinking that they're dating, which Cheeky outright asks about. I'm not gonna go too much into all of that since I'm probably gonna do a Shiki and May video down the line at some point, but yes, it is as gay as it sounds. Anyway, the others help Ren get herself back on track, and Kanan signs up to be the student council vice president, assuring Ren she'll always have someone to help her. <laughs> Then Ren invites everyone over to play Super Mario 3D World and achieves true gamer bliss in a moment shared with her friends, no longer completely afraid of revealing her insecurities and passions to others. Also this, I'd be robbing you by not mentioning this even if it's not relevant to this video. 100 out of 10 amazing episode. <laughs> Jokes aside, genuinely I love this episode. It's fun and does a lot for Ren. I think her getting focused in a fun one-off episode is something she really needed. And this episode builds on a lot of what we saw from her before too, which is always nice. However, afterwards Ren's relevance wanes once again. We see in the next episode Kinako has also joined the student council as a secretary, which is cool. I feel like Kanon, Ren, and Kinako could easily be a subunit if Liello gets them down the line. I'd love to see an episode involving the trio of them and some student council predicament. Something like episode 7 of School Idol Project Season 2, just without the shitty diet plot bogging it down. And to the show's credit, she does get some other moments too. Her reaction to the other students congratulating the Idol Club for making it to regionals is incredibly cute, and we get to see her and Mei composing together a bit, which is neat, and expands on their dynamic in the Gamer episode a bit. Also in the last episode, we get this conversation between her and Shisato about Kanon, and a little bit of her reflecting on her mother and wanting to make her proud before finals, which are moments I love. But then... That's kind of it. It feels like season one again, though to a lesser degree, where after her focus episode, it's back to her mostly being off to the side, outside of a few small moments. Not as bad as it was there, like I said, at least, but still an issue to an extent. It's a shame, I really do think you are Ren Hazuki. Helped with her divisiveness. It was a genuinely great episode and the sort of thing she needed. It helped make her feel more integrated into the larger group, which as I've said was a problem she had in season one. And making that the plot point was great, but ultimately it didn't change her falling into the background the most out of the original five. She's less divisive now, but that's partially because the show has sort of forgotten her. I like Ren, I always have, but she's suffered the most from a pretty long-standing issue in Love Live. When you have nine plus main characters, you're going to have trouble balancing them screen time-wise, especially in Superstar where there's only 12 episodes a season as opposed to the regular 13. With the new first years and wine and everything else, Ren was just sort of lost in the shuffle. I think season three could do some interesting things with Ren. Graduating from the school she put so much passion into getting off the ground is bound to result in some sort of emotional moment, and I'm interested in seeing what they do. Plus, her and Mei composing together is rife for expansion. The recent manga anthology even sort of does this. It establishes they talk about games together in a pretty fun scene, and we also get to see Ren basically almost kissing Kanon while playing what's outright a Yuri game. If you haven't read this, I'll link a fan translation below because it's fucking incredible. <laughs> as well as Kanon, Kinako, and her being in the council together, like I've said. They've addressed her issue of lack of connections to the other members now, so hopefully they continue with that. But at least for the time being, Ren has gone from Superstar's most divisive character after season one to its most forgotten.